What is going on, Black Belt Barber? Welcome back to another episode of the Black Belt Barber podcast. This podcast is the first podcast that we talk about entrepreneurship for barbers. The reason why is because your chair, it is your businesses. Guys, today it's very, very important episode because we, I'm going to be sharing here strategies and things that I have done to become a fully booked barber. So this is very important. We're going to be sharing three strategies the most important the most important ones the most important three strategies that I have done it did really help me to become a fully booked barber those strategies will help you to become fully booked in less than 6 months and know what the best thing is for free and i have here my co-host my beautiful wife and say hi <laughs> hi everyone so i'm so excited here to talk I'm, I'm i'm talking more than you now than you today it's okay you can and talk you as Go a ahead. barber might be watching this episode and you might wonder uh once in your lifetime you might wonder like why my co-worker why that barber next to me has more client than me why someone that i saw on social media has more client than me why uh, certain barbers in other barbershop are fully booked and I am not. So today, don't worry about it. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna be sharing that. And if you apply, definitely will help you. It will change the way you see things and will change uh, how much money you're going to be making because you're going to become a fully booked barber. So the first one is referrals. I believe referrals, I think, is the most powerful one because referrals... It's something guaranteed because once your client, once you cut that client, make sure he's happy. He's going to talk good about you. He's going to enhance how good professional you are, you know, how, how, how good you cut and how good you are as a person, you, the, the personality connecting and he's going to be sharing. So that's a great way to, um, to get more clients. And I want to share something what I do. Okay, what I do, uh, great a great tip so you can do it, uh, so you can start, okay? That's what I do. I, when I finish my client, every time I finish, I ask if, it, if they like it, if they say yes. For sure, they're not going to say they, they didn't like it. Some of them do. Uh, if they say they like it and I ask if they can refer me to someone, someone means that their friends, their uh, father or son or anybody out there and it, they just say yes because they are a walking canvas marketing doing marketing for you as a barber so what i have done uh in, back in 2010 you want to talk or no no i'm listening so Go back ahead. in 2010 i i used to be uh, a hairdresser right i used to do cosmetology i used to have unisex i used to do girls women's and men's and I had to do this change because I want to become a barber, only cut men's. And it was very hard for me because I didn't have much clientele, men's. So I couldn't survive in those clients. It was like, it was like few of them. And I had to come up with the, with the idea, with, uh, what's the word? Strategy. With a strategy. With a plan. With a plan. <laughs> Great plan. So what I'm going to share, you don't have to do it, but it worked for me and you can do as in your budget, do as if you can do it. But what I have done is those clients that I had already. The few five clients. The few five clients, <laughs> I told them, next time you come, bring a friend and you're going to have your haircut for free. Wow. A week after or two, that th throughout actually throughout the whole month, <laughs> even the, uh, the, the old clients, they used to come like, more than three times per month because it was free, you know. And I did that for a while, and I became fully booked and doubled my salary. So that's one way I did. I, you don't have to do it, but uh, you that can do it. That's a an strategy that worked for you, right, at the time when you did. And they stayed with you? Like the, cl the new clients they brought? Every single one, still nowadays, I serve those clients. Kids that used to be like 15 years old, like 12 years old, 9 years old, they're still with me nowadays. Now they're old. Now they're older. 
Yeah. So this was one of the referrals is very important, guys, because like I said, your client is walking canvas marketing for you, and that's free. Mm -hmm. I we have we track down all new clients that we have at the barbershop, and the most the channel that brings the most client that we know because we track every single one, we, we track from social media, Google, and referrals. Who more than that? Three, right? Yeah. So referrals is the one that brings the most people in the barbershop. And the client, the client, it's 100% is going to sit in your chat because someone that he knows refers you. Someone right. that he knows and trusts. And trusts. Told them about it. They won't question. They'll say, yeah, I'll go there. And another thing is uh, when we started the business. So Tico did this by himself when he was working by himself before he had the shop. Then when we opened the shop, what we did is we uh, created a promotion that every new client would receive a percentage off on their first haircut. Because then they would have the opportunity to try uh, and see if they like Invictus. And then, of course, we did a great job in retaining those clients so they would come back. So sometimes offering something in their first visit, uh, it helps a lot to build a clientele. doesn't have to be free like Tico did. <laughs> the free works really fast. <laughs> Faster than the, the uh, percentage off of the haircut. Yes. Very free. And I think that strategy that we do it we used to do at Invictus Barbershop it helped breaking the ice between the the place and the client or the barber and the clients because they get to know the place they get used to it with the vibe get to get to know who are there you know so if they fit that that place right the environment so that's a great way and also that sets you apart too from other barbers, right? Because now you are offering the opportunity that client he's gonna look around. Certain people are charging certain amount of dollars, and actually giving that discount, you give them the opportunity to try you out first, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, m most big business they do that. So if you think about it, um, when you're signing up for a subscription. They always have this catchy thing where they give you 50% off your first month or they give you a free 30-day trial. So they always offer you something really good for you to try them. To catch you. <laughs> and then, or when you're ordering something for the first time online, they do that a lot where they give you a big companies does that. Big discount on your first order because they trust their product and they know you become a regular customer they will buy again and why not apply in the barber shop in the barber industry and um, the client that is coming to you you need a good reason for them why they're leaving their old barber and then giving this promotion or this very good deal it's a great reason if there is something they're not happy with their existing barber l a little thing and then he say oh this promotion it's so cool or someone refer and say you know what you should go to my barber you know what uh but you have to do your best when that client sits in your chair because that's the one and only opportunity, opportunity you, you have. have to be the best what you do but not only cutting their hair just make sure you're nice with them just make sure you treat them like kings Okay, yeah. but this is the number three strategy. Okay, oh, okay. Don't, so. don't skip the strategy. Hold on. <laughs> so, so number one is referrals. referrals. Ask for referrals. But one more thing. Remember I asked you guys that you, you were wondering or asking yourself why those barbers are a book and I'm not? It's just because they are doing something you are not or you don't know or you want to know now. Right? Yes. So they're doing something different than you. Than you. That it's keeping them busy. And this I have done. I need you guys to apply this because in less than six months you're gonna become fully booked. Because that client that sits in your chair once is gonna become next month, is gonna be talking about your your service, you as a barber that they always say, Oh, I I went to Tico, he's he's amazing with cutting hair, but also man. He's a great entrepreneur. He's got these great ideas. When I sit in his chair, we talk for hour, for one hour, 30 minutes about business or about, 
you always ask if I'm, they 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 come they make those comments with their friends when they refer them, mm-hmm. right? So refer is the number one, and I I believe this is the most strong and powerful one that you should ask. Just ask for referrals. The client's already there. You don't have you only have to open out your mouth. Yes, right? because That's if you don't ask, you might not get as many referrals mm-hmm. as if you ask. You have to ask, and it doesn't cost anything. And from 10 clients, if you ask 10, let's say eight, we'll do it. We'll do it. But if you don't ask, maybe two will do it. A good tip is if you hand, handle him a card with your signature or and saying like 10% off on uh, on a refer from this card. Yes. You, know? you yeah, can that's, create that's a, a program cre- to yeah. benefit that client that is referring new clients uh-huh. in some way. So... Uh, uh, if you bring me five clients, five referrals, I'll get you a haircut and beard for free. You don't have to do that for a while. You know, do that for three months, six months, between three to six months, and then you don't you don't have to do that anymore. You know, but yes. keeping in mind, you always always have to ask for referrals. Ask for <laughs> referrals and have new clients coming in because most of the time we're losing clients constantly. We don't know what's happening in other people's life. You know. We yes, lose but the thing is, you don't. You're not supposed to be losing as much as as yeah. you gaining. Of course, you do lose clients for many reasons. This could be another podcast just talking about the reasons why you lose clients. They move. They find a new job that it's far from the barber shop. It's not more. Con- it's not any more convenient for them to come to you. Many reasons, but of course you can lose more clients than you are attracting because then yes. you'll be negative and then you're not, never going to be fully booked. But one thing though, you have to at least be good, be the master of your craft. Be good at cutting hair, at least. That's our obligation as a barber. That's at least. That's the first thing you have to have in mind. Be good at cutting hair. But now... I, I disagree. I disagree completely. And but that's the number three. And I have pictures to prove my point. But <laughs> watch until the end and you'll know why I disagree. That just being good at cutting hair, it's not enough to, to have you full But book. that's one requirement. No, for sure. You have to provide a certain level of quality. Of quality. But that's not what's going to make you make busier back. Yes. than the other barbers in your shop. So next one will be social media. Nowadays, we have this tool, this little thing here, this little computer in our hands. And the most of people in the world are handle this like nine, open this and watching the screen and all the time, like 90% of their time. And why you're not here showing what you do, who you are, where you are, where you work at, the people around you, the people in your region, the people in your city, they should see it because I used to, in my time, when I started, uh, even in back then, I, I didn't have like social media like this. We didn't have social media like this. I had to hand out cards everywhere I go. So that brought me a lot of... I wasn't embarrassed, but people are embarrassed to do that sometimes. Like they kind of like shy to mm-hmm. do that. I used to hand out cards every single time that I was out there. I used to carry a bunch of cards like this much. 100 cards in my pocket. And you can do Invista print. It costs you ten dollars for a bunch of cards, and you can put your logo, you can put your address, and make sure you put your information, and social media because nowadays they can see uh, the social media is your magazine, right? They can see what you do, how good you are at cutting hair. Actually, that's the first thing they're gonna look at it is how good how good you cut hair. But that's the first time when they go to you. But the next time they come is because your personality, who you are, you know, how engaged, how nice you are with them. You and know? what type of experience you provided to them as yeah, well. what type of experience, yes. Not just the haircut, the overall experience from the time they walked in, how you greet them, if you offered water, coffee, the conversation you had. Yes. That's what keep them coming back for Come the back next, for second, the next third, yep. fourth time. Treat them like... Nobody will treat them. I believe that. Mm -hmm. And also, talking about social media, I think, that I think I'm sure Instagram, uh, there's a lot of young people. I I believe the youth 
are more on Instagram than 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 Facebook. Yes. You can use Instagram if you are young and if you we want a young crowd. You can use all of them, but the Instagram, the the youth people are more on Instagram. Use the Instagram to drag more clients to your chair, not drag, <laughs> to bring, bring more clients, <laughs> drag them. We're talking about Instagram. There is TikTok. There is a Snapchat. There's Facebook. You use mm -hmm. all those platforms to post it. Post and talk about what you do. Post post uh, before and after. Post about the haircut. Post about the environment where you work. How good is to cut the hair at that barbershop, right? That you work at. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So there's another channels too that you can use. Like uh, let's say you have groups on Facebook, Facebook. or WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Let's say I used to have like 13 groups. Most of them wasn't adding much to my life. Like the soccer group. <laughs> the soccer group, the church. The beer drinkers. The, the beer drinkers. <laughs> Post every time. It's free. Yes. Tell them. Do it before and after. Even if people that friends that don't cut with you, they might change their mind, mm -hmm. you know, and come to you. And they so, can help referring, like forwarding the message to someone. Yeah, text and ask them. Can you? This is my work. This week I'm running this promotion. This week I still have openings available. Uh, if you can, please share. You know what? One thing I used to do, I used to do that with my text messages. Mm -hmm. I used to sit in on a, not DMs, but text messages. I'm gonna talk about DMs now. You're writing one by one. One by one. It's a lot. But it has to be personalized. Yeah. Because uh, I knew the people, but some clients didn't, wasn't come for a while. And I personalized that message for that person. I was sitting over there and saying, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. What's happening? Are you okay? I still do now nowadays, yes. right? At the barbershop now, since I miss someone, I say, wow, I haven't seen that person. You haven't come. I send them a text message. You should do that. Not so, only because you're thinking just about business and money, but because you truly care about that person and maybe... Uh, something is happening and they need some support, so be there for them. And that and that creates a uh, relationship because you care yes, about them. Yes, for sure. Right? We always think, oh, this guy hasn't come in a while. And then... Why is that? And is he should... sick? Is he okay? Is, he fam is his family okay? Let's ask. And then Tico send a personal message. Hey, it's Tico. I was wondering, is everything okay? Do you need anything? Is everybody okay? Your family? Are you having any hardships? If anything, you know, let me know. I'm here to help. Last month I did that. I sent a message to one of our clients that I, I told my wife, like, oh, he, he didn't came for a while already. And I said, oh, how are you? And then he answered me back. Mm -hmm. you know, I think he, he was said, just busy with work, right? With lots of work things going on in his life. I and say, then he I'm came always back. here for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So now I'm going to. No, sh wait. What? You're talking about social media still, right? Still. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to share something that will blow your mind that I did. We're going to take you it will, will take a little bit effort that you're going to have to do every single day. You can do day days or nights. I used to do at night because the most time I had uh 5 years ago was DMs. I used to send cuz when we opened the barbershop, we didn't have the, the as much clientele we do have today, right? And I had my barbers. They weren't booked. I was the only one that were very busy, but I wasn't, like, very, very book, uh, busy. I no, had, you were. You were fully booked. I had to create these strategies to bring clients to me and to the barbershop to help my barbers become fully booked, booked, fully booked, like, fill their chairs, <laughs> with people and what i used to do i used to send like 30 m message every single night to clients around the barbershop in in the city of coconut creek that's where the barbershop is and i used to do like a personalized uh message and i used to send to everybody around us you want to talk about that too in yeah the so basically what we did was before we go to bed at night Tico and I would prepare, we would go on Instagram and then through the location, we would find posts from people that live in this area and then go to their profile, see who they are, and then create a special message for each one of them mentioning that, uh, you know, 
We're, I'm a barber. I have a barber shop here in Coquindo Creek. My name is Tico. I'm having a special. And then also he would send the message to wives and say, hey, I see uh, what a beautiful family you have. I love to cut your husband hair. I love to cut your kids hair and create a special message for each person. And then we would send, what, 30, 40 messages every single night. And we did that for a couple months. And if you can make sure the wife will give them the message, they will go to you. Yes. For sure. If my wife tell me, oh, we have, you know, this beautiful restaurant someone sent me the other day. You want to go there? For sure. Let's go. I trust her. I, I know her taste. So for sure, if the, if the, the wife says, hey, babe. This new barber shop in town, or oh, it doesn't have to be new. This new barber just sent me us a message. Check him out. And first thing they're going to do is look on, on your social media to make sure you're good at cutting. Yes, right? they check who you are, see your profile, make sure you have a nice profile. So to do that, first, organize your profile. What things you should have? First, your profile cannot be private. How the person will see your work. If you want your profile private, private that's your personal profile but that's for fine. business it has to be public Remember there is your chair is your no business <laughs> so that's your business yes because they're gonna go there and see who's this guy because sometimes you talk about business and people think oh i don't have i don't own a barbershop but your Actually, chair is your business your chair is your business so listen yeah. up and one thing too you can't be hard to find Right? With the name. Yes. Don't choose a name with a lot of underscore numbers and letters. Keep it simple. Because imagine the font too. <laughs> you're trying to tell people, um, oh, what's your Instagram? I'll follow you. Underscore S2H. <laughs> um, underscore. 1984. Yeah. Dot so com. make sure the, the username is simple. No underscores. Avoid putting letters and numbers and writing things too difficult for people to figure it out for example our barber shop it's invictus barber shop and we couldn't get the invictus barber shop username so we got invictus barbers which is very simple and easy there's no underscores tico's instagram tico invictus that's it so people have no doubt about how to find you and then make sure in your description your bio you have the information, either your phone, either the link to book, the address. It's very important to have the location, how people will know where you are. So make sure the profile, the bio is complete. It has to have your address, the name of the shop you work at, either the link to book or your phone or whatever way, your WhatsApp, whatever way you book appointments, it has to be there. And put a couple pictures of your work. So when they see the message, they go to your profile, they're going to like what they see. And also a picture on your profile needs to show your face at least. So they can, when they click it, oh, this is the right guy. Yes. Right? And the font, it's called font, the, the letters. Uh -huh. The font needs to be very clear. What you do, the address needs to be very readable. Read neat so they can yes. read. Actually, you cannot customize. People sometimes use some tricks to put yeah, these just, yeah. weird fonts on Instagram. Don't do that. That's not good because it's hard to read. And as Tico said, show your face. Because if they go to your page and there is only the haircuts, headshots, <laughs> that's not good. Mix with pictures of the environment, the barbershop, take a nice picture of your chair, of your station with your tools organized, and have at least one picture of yourself. Yeah. If you're, you know, don't like to expose yourself on social media, but at least one good picture of you and your profile should have your uh, face, not random stuff. They have to see your face. It's important. And the... Uh if you're aiming to a certain type of clientele, uh, you can put, a, I believe you can put on your profile something that catch the, this type of client's attention. Correct. Right? What, so, can for you example, give an example? Uh, if, you, um, if you don't cut kids or if you prefer not to attract too many or kids. Or just the youth or just seniors. 
So if you don't want to attract kids, don't post haircuts of kids. Because then what you post, that's what you're going to attract. So if your, um, your perfect client is between 20 and 40 years old, post pictures of people that fit this profile. So whenever someone goes to your profile, they will feel connection. Oh, see, they see themselves in those pictures and they say, oh, this must be a good barber for me. So if you do um, fantasy colors, you do these very um, creative haircuts, if you post them, you might not attract people that like more traditional haircuts because if they don't know you, they see and they think, oh, this is the type of work he does, so it's not for me. Analyze what type of uh, profile, age you want, and then you post accordingly to attract more of those people. You know one secret? No. To become fully booked? No. Let's say you serve, you cut like eight haircuts, you do eight haircuts a day. Oh, I think I know what you're going to say. With every single client, take a story, make sure you, t you post that story and tag that person. So now, not only your clients will see it, that that person is there and they kind of, they say, wow, that, you know, they connect with that age, that person's in a chair. But also when he reposts all his his uh, audience will see who you are, where you are, and how, how, how good you are. Yes. So it's a great tip, right? You get free exposure. Free yes. exposure. But don't take the picture just of the client the haircut. Client. Try to take a picture with your client. With your client, yep. Smiling. Mm -hmm. You know, then he will share, and everybody that follows him will see. Well, even you can show them how, how happy your clients are with their haircut, right? Mm -hmm. Or ask the clients a question. Why'd you come here? Did you like your haircut? You know, showing them, tag them, and that's it. They will repost. Uh, ask permission first and do that with clients that you already have some friendship. Don't do it with first-time clients because you might scare them, right? Who's this guy <laughs> taking pictures of me, making videos? I come here just for haircut and he's interviewing me on his, on his Instagram. So do that with people that you have more, you had already built a relationship but it goes a long way because they will repost for sure. And right now you're watching this episode and you might think, I want to become fully booked because now I'm not making money. I'm most of the time sitting in my chair, running around. And you, you have to be willing to do what the other people are doing, the barbers, they are fully booked because becoming fully booked, if you're not, is the future, right? And I can tell you the future the best way to predict the future is by creating the future. So that you need to look at yourself, learn everything I'm sharing, apply, and the future will come. What is the future? Become fully booked. Mm -hmm. So remember, the best way to predict to your future, it is by creating it. Don't sit and wait, right? Be proactive. Get, take actions. Take actions to create the future you're looking for. If you just see it and complain, oh, I'm not booked. And don't tell anybody in your barbershop. Do it for us because by showing results, they're going to come to you and then you can share. That's a great way. Don't share your dreams, you know? Yes. And don't mind other people's business, what they're doing in the sense that the other guy is just sitting there. Don't be like him. Take care of your life. It's your result. It's your future. Take care of your business, your chair. Your chair. So to now, make it full. So now I'm going to share. We are going to share pictures. Or no, no chair, share the third one first. Oh, okay. Before the pictures that prove my point that just doing good haircuts, it's not enough to keep you fully booked. You can be the Josh LaMonica of haircuts. You can be... So Elias. So yeah. Elias. You can be the best of the best of the best. But if you don't do the number three, then clients won't come back. So number one, when you pee. Number two is when is number two when you go to the restroom. No, just kidding. And what? Number, th <laughs> <laughs> <and> number three. <laughs> just joking around. Uh, number three, it's the barber that it is a conversationalist. Means that the barber has a nice 
skill of communication, right? Communication skills is a part of the soft skills. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be born. With, uh, lots of people are born with, like, they communicate with you really well. But that you can train. That's trainable. You know, you can teach yourself and learn and watch whoever, those free videos on YouTube that you can watch how to how to engage more by communicating with your clients. The reason why is because your clients will come at first because your haircut, but because the way you talk, your personality, you show them who you are and what you do outside the barbershop, all this this way of, there's many ways of communication, right? You can mm -hmm. communicate through our social media. You can communicate in words, the way you dress, the, the way you act, you know? Nonverbal non communication. Nonverbal communication. So, and be careful with that because that's very dangerous too. Human beings read more of the nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. So, your posture, your face expressions, the, re the reactions you do when they say s certain things. Mm -hmm. And whatever you post on social media, if the client that you are aiming for, they see something that is not aligned to their principles, values, or whatever they are looking for in their lives, they're going to see, oh, let me give an, uh, I'm not against, okay, you do whatever you want to do. Let's say you, you're posting that you were smoking Maria da Joana. No? <laughs> it's okay. You do, you like it, that's fine, but... Certain clients that you are aiming for, they might look at it and say, no, I don't go with this. Because people judge each other, you know, before they even know you. You know, they judge you because of tattoos. They judge you because your haircut. <laughs> they, judge you because, they judge you because the way you dress, the way you talk, yes. you know. Or, for example, if you post about um, controversial subjects, politics, religion... Um, if you talk about these issues and if you position yourself in your business profile, meaning the, bus the profile you're trying to attract clients, what could happen is someone that doesn't have the same beliefs as you do won't come to your shop. And then you, you might be losing a client. So as Tico said, it's your life, it's your Instagram, it's your business, you do whatever you want. Uh, but we are just suggesting that you don't because this might prevent you from gaining new clients if they have a different vision than you. That's the thing because people have different vision, different opinions. And now since you have, let's, let's say, the political stuff, right? You have uh, Democrats and Republicans. Correct. Let's give an example. You are posting something, uh, not opposing, but supporting uh, Democrats or Republican. Now, you are on one side of the fence now, of the of the the wall. So this other side look at you as a maybe they not a part of their group, not a part of their tribe, tribe. So now only the other group will come more open up with you. They might engage more with you because you guys have the same vision. But you don't have to do that because I believe that you. Behind the chair, you are barber, making sure they look good, feel good. You don't have to express that much. I, that's my vision. Mm -hmm. You can do it too. But I agree. The barbershop, it's a place for all different people. And actually, it's a good thing for us to connect with uh, people with different views. Use this as a learning experience where you can ask questions and learn more about why they see the word that way, why they believe that it's the correct side, that's the correct thing to do. But don't position yourself against because then you're losing a client. But it's a great opportunity to listen, right? Listen and, and to learn. learn about new cultures, about new visions, that it's not just your bubble of what you know. You're expanding the bubble to see things in a different perspective on someone else's perspective. One thing I really like about the barbershop is that we have the opportunity to meet people from different parts of the world and they have different cultures. And it's really nice to talk to them about how is life in their country, uh, what is their religion, what is the currency that they use, um, what is different in their country from the US because there are some things very curious about it. 
So it's it's so nice to learn. And then if you don't position yourself in your social media because it's your business profile, you can do that in your personal profile. Feel free to do it. It's your Instagram. You do whatever you want. You post whatever you want. But in your business profile, I would be more cautious to not... I believe money is money. Uh, money is, is the same from uh, an African-American, Asian, slim person or overweight or blonde or, you know, the money is money and that client doesn't have nothing to do with your opinion. I believe you can discuss and talk about because you can share information, but I don't think we just choose one side or another because that will create a huge impact on your paycheck. <laughs> yes, you know? and you know? most importantly, we, we are in the people business and then people means different people. Right, uh, different opinions, different ethnies, and same thing like soccer. Any, uh, they have different views about which, which team they like best, and that's fine. Let's not argue about. Let's not, you know, let's have fun together and and have fun talking about fun subjects. And we, when we talk, up, we talk about communication, guys. Communication and what this is what you will retain more clients in your chair, not a haircut. Make sure you talk to your client. Make sure you talk to the things that the client likes. Make sure you ask questions about their family, you know, their whatever they do as a, for a living. Uh, I used to ask, I, I like to ask about what they do on their free time, on the weekends. And they tell me next time they come, we kept talking about that same uh, topic. So that's a great way to retain your clients because haircuts might be the first time, but the second time he comes to your chair is because who you are. You know, if they engage with you, if the personality is matched, mm -hmm. you know. And um, one tip, as Tico just said, is ask questions. That's the best way to engage in a conversation with your client. He's usually <coughs> there to talk. Men go to barber shop to talk to their barber. And people want to talk about things they like. So they're think you're at the barber Actually shop. About themselves. And things they like, meaning mm. themselves. Yeah. Um and when you're there, you are in your business environment, right? You're not at your home with your friends. You're working. So use this to your advantage. Asking questions is the best way to learn more about that person and talk about things they like. So one of our barbers, um, Dari, there is an episode with her. If you haven't watched, you should watch. She's amazing. And what I notice is when she has a kid, she talks about video games. She talks about soccer. She talks about anything that kid is interested in. And then she's talking to a teen teenager. She's talking about a subject that that teenager might be interested. Actually, in. it's changing masks, right? You put one mask. No, I don't kid. like that. I mean, no, but mask. meaning that for the good way, You're for the better. You're not being fake. Not being fake, but you had to adapt yourself to uh, re being resilient in that situation. You're just showing interest in what that person like and talking about subjects. It's not a mask. I don't like that. I, 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 I like it. It, it seems like you're you know. being fake. You're being no, but you're being resilient for the each type of client situation that you have, but for the good. Okay, so it's not a mask. I don't okay. like the mask comparison. <laughs> it seems like I'm putting a mask with you. I'm something not with someone a devil, else. Devil's mask, but it's fine. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so Dari talks to each client in a certain way about certain subjects that is relevant to that person. So the clients just love her, and every time they come back, she always remembers what they talked about and then she knows deeply something about that person and then she brings it up hey how is the new job how are you liking how is the new house how was the trip because she really cares and she really learns about each client so her retention is like 200 percent. everybody comes back to her you know why why you know was why? <laughs> Since I'm, uh, I'm at the shop at all the times, and I notice the barb that communicates the most, they are the one they are more fully booked. The one they are quiet, they are quiet. They don't have as much retention as the one that talk. You don't have you don't have to talk about 
You don't have to push any conversation. You don't have to talk about stuff that you don't like. Just ask a few questions to understand who that person are, what they do, and from there, you can go on and on. Give examples right? of questions to help them articulate conversation. Our first thing is you ask about their haircut, what they want, what they like. Good. You're going to break the ice and make some something to break the ice. You can make, no, you don't make something funny at, at now. Uh, some joke. I used to make joke with people that I don't even know. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. So ask about how they found uh, the barbershop and you can ask what they what they do for living, what they do for work, if they have family, they are married, what they do. That's a simple question that will will give you a, a array of opportunities to array of opportunities to talk. You opens many doors for many conversation. So you can ask about uh, what they like to eat, what they like to do as in, as in sport, you know. They might have, they might do the same sport as you, and you guys have a conversation for, for hours. And the most, the barbers that are most busy at the shop is the one that talk because, actually, it's it's just like this, right? If you go, I always give an example of a restaurant, right? So if you go anywhere, and if you've been served by someone, and that person, just ask you how are you and leave, and then come back with a face that is very close and the expression is like very quiet and once you ask one question they get back to you with only one word and that person never talks what happened it, what comes through your mind most of the time is that person are angry they are here mad or grumpy because they don't like what they do or they might be going through a lot they might be tired does my haircut will look good after this guy don't want to be here at this shop <laughs> and because you're quiet they don't know they kind of are giving a what's the name when you you predict you predict what that guy is thinking that's what we do as a human being so don't be quiet talk to your clients make sure you ask those questions that i i gave you as a tip and make sure you talk to them you know make sure you constantly talk to them and understand them because that way you can engage a conversation Yes, we have a barber that he become best friends with all clients. And um, it's a good example. As I said, you're there to work. It's your business. And the way you communicate and if you follow this tip will increase for sure your earnings because then person people will like you for sure. There is a good book to read, which is how to make friends and influence people. It's a great book. Huge book, but you can read it. will help you There is audio book on YouTube. Just type how to yeah. make friends and influence people. And you can listen people. while you, you are at the gym or And if you time. apply that, for sure, people like you and they will come back. Uh, because then you are talking about subjects they like and you become a very likable person. And this, for sure, improve how much money you'll be making. The book is from Dale Kernigan. Uh, the book called How to Make friends and influence people. Uh, he did a, 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 a little uh, interview with the most powerful people back in their time, Abraham Lincoln, all those guys, um, Henry Ford. And he found something like unique. What those guys do, what the other people don't do, does they have so much engage and have so much uh, Power success. Power and influence, influence too. Uh, uh, on, on other people's mm -hmm. life, right? So that's a great book to do it. And I'm going to give you one last example of two. Three. Two examples. No, two. <laughs> two examples that happened with me in the past. When I started working in Boston as a barber, I started working in one shop. This one was one mentor. He taught me from nothing how to cut hair. He was a very quiet guy, and he's still very quiet. But then I worked for a few months at a at a salon, unisex salon, that I had this Brazilian guy. He used to be my mentor too, because I was at the beginning of my career. What's his you name? You know what happened, Alfredo. Alfredo? Alfredo used to talk like the guy from uh, that sells empanadas. <laughs> talk a lot. Alfredo used to talk a lot. <laughs> Didn't even listen to the client. That's not a good thing. <laughs> 
And I noticed how much engagement he has with his clients. And I used to be sitting over there all day long. He used to give me the leftovers. <laughs> I can call the leftovers. It's the people that he was busy and I say, oh, cut with Tico, he's great. He's going to give you a nice job, but do it. And I used to notice, wow, this guy, but I didn't like apply it, right? I moved to Florida and there was another guy that I worked at, at this place. He became a friend and I didn't have, I didn't have clients too. I restart my whole career here in Florida and it came right on the 2008 recession. I didn't have much clients and no retention at all because people used to not having money that back then because we was in a huge recession. And this guy, he has lots of clients, huge clientele. And I said, what does this guy have that I don't have? I was thinking, what should I do? What did I have? You know what? The same thing. He used to be a conversationalist barber, you know? And I start like learning the way he talks and he, he's engaged with the any top. The client used to talk. He was engaged and talk. That's why he has so many. So now I'm going to show the pictures. Not yet. Wow. I just that's remembered the third time. something. I can see the picture in my head. So I was at the front desk. And then Tico has a private room where he served his clients. And then this client, uh, he messaged me on my personal cell phone because we're friends. And then he's like, Lydia, there is any way you can squeeze me in today with Tico. Please, 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 please. I really need a haircut. And I did. So I squeezed him in after Tico's last client. I say, okay, Tico will open an exception for you today. And then he came. He was in the room with Tico. And then when he left, Tico and him, they were holding hands. And they are like bouncing the, head, <laughs> the hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like two kids in the... <laughs> in the park walking with their hands together it was so funny and i was laughing because tico hold his hand and he kept <laughs> and he told my wife when he saw her outside oh, you see what your husband do with me you see <laughs> it was so, so funny that's like, how you create a retention that's how the clients will come back to you that's the reason why right and you do other things that i don't suggest you do it <laughs> he comes to the clients that of course he has a relationship already and say how does it feel to look beautiful like you do? <laughs> Those lines are so perfect, man. <laughs> Especially the look-looking, look, look, good, look, look, good good, looking, good looking. Good looking guys with like green eyes, blue eyes. And then he come like, how does it feel to be yeah, handsome? Nice body. Those guys take care of themselves like so yes, good. Yes, <laughs> the ones that work out. And how the heck you look that good, man? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they love you. So now... One thing too. What? One thing I do is massage. I massage all my clients with a, yes. um, with a little massager from uh, Theragun, the mini. Now the new one. That's my new toy. You my don't new stop talking about the Theragun my massager. My new acquisition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does massage on the shoulders. Before I start, when, when I'm doing my consultation, I do that. And they love. It breaks the ice. And sometimes you might wondering, why Tico has so much client? I just share here the secret. The secret. You hold their hands. Yeah. And you call them sexy. You're amazing. <laughs> All right. So to prove our point, uh, actually my point, that just doing a gray haircut won't make you fully booked. I prepared a video showing Tico's haircuts. I'm embarrassed. When with those pictures, he did that strategy to. Uh, offer a free haircut so if the client brought someone he would give this client that brought the new client a free haircut so i'll Back play then. the video <laughs> of these haircuts at the time and he became fully booked even though his skills for haircut were not as developed My as they are today was a mess. are you embarrassed can i share i'm embarrassed <laughs> but at the same time i know we have to goals <laughs> we have to start somewhere so this is the haircuts Tico this, was this providing was my mohawks the, the lines oh that lines the highway oh my gosh the i-95 on the client's head look at the picture one position only of the head the same one look at gel this. the line was thick as on a 95 highway <laughs> <laughs> I used to put no connection at all. But mm -hmm. now, as you can see, the picture, the client has a uh, different head position. The light is great. The fade is great. 
the style is amazing. Uh, you see the light, how clean the haircut it is. That was cool. But let me tell you, I used to be booked up with those messed up haircuts. And yes. I'm, I'm not, I'm ashamed of it. But at the same time, I am grateful because we always start somewhere and right. wasn't my haircut. As you guys can see, my haircut was horrible. They were not coming for horrible. the haircuts. <laughs> they wasn't coming. <laughs> you know what? I have this, that's why I, my role at the barbershop is taking care of my guys, taking care teaching them, train them, guide them. Uh, it's because I have this other side that being more sociable and I have this gift that I connect with anybody and I can make people, even if they are ang angry, not hungry, angry grumpy. or grumpy, I can turn the situation around and make them feel good, make them more calm, and at the end of the day, they connect with me and they kiss me, they love me. So I, I believe this is a gift. I love this because I love people. You know, it I is love a to gift, work. but you can develop social skills because awesome. I wasn't as sociable as I am today. I learned a lot with Tico because he was always complaining about <laughs> about my behavior, not being really sociable. And I think you can improve. Well, actually, you're a really good communicator. What is that? So you're a really good communicator. You but communicate not really well, but not sociable. Yeah. Not the type of person that would be friends with everybody. No. That would be like you're open. always. You're not going to be open for any. Anybody, you're always you know? smiling and joking and making people laugh. I'm not like that. I'm more like, I don't know you. I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> and I was able to develop this skill up to a certain point. I'm not like you because you're naturally that way. But for sure it helps because then we have much better results being sociable with people. And we are in the people business so we have to, we, you ha we have to like people otherwise you can be a barber no otherwise honestly. you otherwise you need to move go to the next trip to uh, uh elon musk uh what, what's to the uh, space to the space and live there on what's mars? The in mars you know why <laughs> because you deal with your wife you deal with your friends you deal with your, the barbs your co-worker with family? your boss with yourself you are a person your family we constantly have dramas and events happening, negativity or positive stuff, things happening. You need to know how to increase these skills, yes. how to talk to people, how to engage, how to make, how to, what's the word? Be more likable. So more likable, be more sociable with people. Connect with you, yep. You, much, you get much better results, results in, in life, life, in all areas of your life. And if you don't like people, then I don't think you can be a barber. Because you'll be seeing so many people every day, every day. And then you'll be stressed. You will be unhappy. You are in the people business to make them look good. I had to. To make them feel good. I had to train myself to become better with that too. Because, wow. because that's the thing. Not only being having the gift, you have to sharpen those, those skills. Because who you are now, the way you communicate, you are only know how to deal with this circle of people or friends but if you become if you want to learn more if you become out of your comfort zone and move up to the next level you should know how to communicate with those people that you has the same view uh let's say you have a dream of become success success successful barber right you had to have this open mind then you're going to be out there making uh um what's the name relationship connecting with people so you have to be up to be sociable That's I, I think, think the best way to sharpen your skills your social skills is when you have to deal with difficult people that would be the best 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 tool because then if you can deal with a difficult person you can deal with anyone if you ask me one question and say and ask me would would you teach the most your child if you have one? What would you do? I I, I have my my question. Mm. But we're gonna have a child, and we're gonna have a conflict if we don't agree on that. <laughs> so let me share my <laughs> my opinion. I will do my best to make sure my child will be a great communicator. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. To be able to express their feelings, their thoughts, their that's needs. A, that's a very powerful thing that you can use to your whole life to do anything in life. It 
not for barbering only or mm -hmm. anything in your life, if you're a good communicator, I see the most successful people, even the, U the TikTokers and YouTube influencers, they're go great communicators mm -hmm. in their way. You yes. Know? So I, I agree. You Communication agree? skills, yep. They have more success in all areas of their life, their relationships, their work life they will be much more successful if they know how to communicate. I think this is it. You have anything mm -hmm. else to say? Nope. Man, this was an amazing episode. Remember, this podcast it is, is sponsored by Invictus Podcast Studios. Make sure you follow. Make sure you uh, share this video for the, the barbers that you know, please, because definitely that will help you and will help someone else. Give it a like, comment below. And that way we're going to share more stuff that you like. And also, thank you very much for watch. Thank you, every single one of our, our people, our audience. So I see you next time, everyone. Remember at, at 8 p.m. every time.